Thank you for the introduction. Hello, thank you everyone for being here this morning. We have a couple more seats here if you want to sit down with us. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just, because I don't see well uh, far even with my glasses on, <laughs> so it's absolutely self-serving. Um, so yeah, it's my first time in Singapore. I'm super excited and it looks like a really good work camp, so you should be excited about uh, your community. It's a good one. So my name is Francesca. I'm the WordPress community manager at SiteGround, the web hosting company. And uh, giving back to the WordPress community is actually part of my job. And uh, it, it's awesome, obviously. And I get to do one of the things that I love the most, which is uh, sharing knowledge. I think we all have something to share and we're not going to take this with us in the afterlife. So we better share it now <laughs> and um, and I do so by you know based on my experience uh, or on the collective experience of the SiteGround team this talk uh, in particular is based uh, in my experience as a hosting company employee but also some terrible experiences that I had as a web developer <laughs> when I was freelancing um, I am not a security expert so if any of you is a security expert in this room, don't ask me <laughs> advanced <laughs> security questions because the whole point of this talk is actually talking about security in a non-menacing way for people that have no coding skills, have no security knowledge, but if there are some security experts amongst you, luckily I have a colleague attending with me who's an expert WordPress enterprise engineer and is right outside at the SiteGround booth. So if you do have uh, advanced questions, please come by the booth, but don't ask me because I, I don't know the answer for sure. Uh, <laughs> so I like to think of myself as a common sense dispenser. I'm full of common sense. Uh, so this, uh, this is what, um, what the talk is about. Uh, honestly, uh, it's about not making it over complicated. There are some basic steps that you can take to secure your website and to secure your browsing. And they're kind of easy to implement, uh, but a lot of time you hear the term security and you go, oh, this is for developers, this is too complicated for me. But actually, the very basic rules of security uh, can be implemented by everyone. So, my as I said, during my time as a freelancer, I had a horrible experience of uh, being hacked. I run a website for women, uh, for female entrepreneurs in Italy. And uh, one day we receive a cease and desist uh, email from a, an American lawyer. And of course we panic because what's going on? So what's going on is that uh, a pharmaceutical company added some uh, content to our website that was uh, mentioning the competitor of the company and bashing it. And basically, we didn't realize any of this at the time because we had a false sense of security. Uh, we had a plugin. We had a plugin installed on the website. So we said, all right, this is taking care of everything for us. But that's not how it works. This is a sentence that you might have heard a lot um, when we talk about security, not just in the WordPress space. But security is a process and not a plugin. A plugin, plugins, there are awesome plugins, the security plugins out there. But you cannot just rely on that. You have to do your homework. You are part of uh, making your website secure. So. Just a few words on who carries the attacks, because when this happened to us with this website, we're like, who, 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 is, who wants to hack us? I mean, we're a blog about, uh, it's a free blog run by volunteers with no ads, and uh, we give advice to women that want to start their own businesses. But so hacking is nothing personal. Hackers don't really care about your website unless you're the FBI or any other very high profile target. Uh, what happens is that, okay, sometimes uh, attacks are carried by people, but this is very rare. And unless, as I said, you have a very uh, high uh, visibility website like the White House, <laughs> they will not care about your blog or my knitting blog, for example. But 
these attacks are very specific and very elaborate, of course, because they are custom made to attack that specific website. What happens to most of us that get hacked is that bots or botnets, which are net network of bots, will run random script and attacks at a scale. Okay, so nobody really cared about my website. It was just there for the taking because it was not secured in any way. Um, so bot attacks are a lot less sophisticated, but they, they, they go at scale. They go at millions at a time. At SiteGround, we have an anti-bot uh, anti uh, AI and it blocks millions of accesses every day. So that's the scale of the, of the attacks. And botnets are just a network of bots where one computer serves as a, a command and control, but it controls all the other computers. So as I said, it's nothing personal. So this is something that you really have to remember because maybe you just launched your website yesterday and like who beside my mother is reading this blog. Why should, why are these hackers caring about me? Why they do? Because of a number of reasons. Because they want to basically gain access to your website and what they can do through your website. So what they can do. A lot of websites get attacked because of spam. So that's exactly what happened to us. They added some content to our website. Uh, that we weren't aware of, and they used basically our website as a vehicle to uh, distribute the spam. Uh, they could be upload unwanted content, uh, they could uh, steal your data, for example, as you know, on WordPress, when someone comments uh, uh, on, your on, your, uh, on your blog, or they buy something through WooCommerce, their email is stored actually in the admin area, so they could gain access to the website just to build a database of email, for example. They just, you know, they just uh, get all the emails and then start sending spam. That's very common. Um, they can redirect. So, uh, as you know, uh, linking is still an important SEO feature so they might link to their website from your website so your website is still whitelisted and they put just links to the website so they can increase their index in in, uh, in google for example uh, they could use your website as part of a web uh, of a, a web boat a botnet sorry <laughs> I'm heavily jet lagged, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> but I'm I'm doing my best. <laughs> so, so or the thing that I didn't really know uh, still existed, but it's ransomware. Do you know what ransomware is? It's digital ransom, and it's actually very popular. Unfortunately, also on social media and Instagram, it's very popular. If you have an account with a lot of followers. Please, please, please secure it because that's very, very common to just receive an email that say, hey, I've got your Instagram account, uh, give me 5,000 euros, that's it. The effects, being hacked has a lot of effects. First of all, the reputation. How many of you have visited a website that said it's hacked and really came back? Probably, I mean, if I see that a website has this notice, the website has been hacked, I will not go back there. Even if they clean it one second after I've been there, my trust in this website is done. I, I don't trust it anymore. Um, it gets this Google safe browsing. It's a feature, one of the many features of Google. It will say this website is not safe for browsing. So again, you have to then get it removed and you have to go through some steps uh, your website could be blocked by your hosting company or your ISP at home uh, because no one wants hacked websites on their network. <laughs> and finally, of course, the cost for cleaning it up. Unless you're able to do it by yourself, someone has to clean this and it costs money and it costs time. But in my eyes, the reputation is the highest cost because it's, it's really done. Once it's done, it's done. So. There's no chance to reduce this to zero. 
Okay, there is no <laughs> zero risk of being hacked, it doesn't exist. But you can reduce the possibility of being hacked by using some very simple and common sense rules. The first one, which is possibly the most important security <laughs> issue ever, is picking a right password. The password needs to be long. And when I mean long, I mean at least 25 characters. It doesn't mean if there are random characters or you know, char thing, a sentence that you can read, but it needs to be at least 25 characters. Don't repeat passwords. Why? Because if you use the same password for your website, for your email address, for your LinkedIn, once these boats get access to one of the services, the first thing they do, they try the same password on every other online service. So if you use your password more than once, they will hack more than one services. No one remembers 25 characters long passwords, okay? So this is why, luckily, we have password managers. I use one password personally, which what the number me what the name means is really that you need just one password, which is the password, the master password, to access the, the, the service, and then everything else is stored and encrypted, so you don't need to worry about. Uh, but honestly, this is probably the most important rule we're going to talk about <laughs> today. The second one is, uh, especially for WordPress, keep everything updated. Now, there used to be a time, and maybe some of you remember it, when there was an update of uh, WordPress, it was panic because you got the white screen of death, the so-called white screen of death. You updated it, you didn't know what went wrong, you just, nothing. So this has really decreased dramatically in the last few years, so don't worry about it. Uh, but it starts also from picking the right plugins and themes. So always pick plugins and themes that have been recently updated that you know are kept alive by their developers. So go see the ratings, of course, but also go see in the forum if they have open questions and if they reply. If they reply, it means that they're still engaged with the product, so they will be there if something happens. And check it, and again, check that there is support, because there are right now, I think, over 45,000 plugins in the, in the WordPress directory, and a lot of them have been abandoned, but maybe you installed it like 10 years ago, and now you're running old code, which might be very dangerous for your website. How do you re know if all of this happens? You go to wordpress.org, plugins or themes, and then you check. There's a number of parameters that you can check. When was updated, how many installations there are tested up to. This is something, a, a screenshot that I did a few months ago. The ratings, the support, these are the important thing that you have to look for. So you know that you're getting your plugging from a reputable source, but also for someone that cares about the product and they protect it actively and they keep applying patches to it. As I said, update everything. Uh, so don't write in WordPress core, don't write in your theme. You create a child theme, you add a functions.php file, but just don't mess with the core files of anything because then the next time you upload it, you're losing everything. Updated, you're losing everything. Uh, and again, there is no, uh, there, honestly, it's really safe nowadays to, to update uh, everything. I am, one of the perks of working for a hosting company is that you have access to a lot of data. <laughs> you can analyze how many uh, updates go well and how many go wrong. And um, for example, last year you might remember uh, the 5.0 WordPress update that everyone was fearing because it was introducing a new editor. And uh, we were one of the first hosts to update it on every server because we tested it when you have this large amount of data available. You test it, oh, let's test it on a couple of servers and it's already thousands and thousands of uh, customers. So if you see that nothing happens, you feel safe and you go on and uh, you can update everything. But 
before you update, this is also very, very, very important. You should always have a backup of your website. Uh, always look for a hosting that provides backup services, but also save your, back, uh, your backups in an offline uh, uh, space, for example, your computer. So you will have two copies if something goes wrong. Also test the restore uh, procedure because don't do what I did with my first website. So I, I, I was probably terrible at being a freelancer. I don't know how people hired me because the first website that I did was my personal website and I managed to delete everything, including the database. Honestly, I went into the, into the customer area and I just deleted everything because I created a bunch of websites to test and I just deleted it. <laughs> and then I did have a backup, but I didn't know how to restore it. <laughs> so please <laughs> test your restore, uh, your restore processes so you're sure, but also back up your computer. This is something that we often forget, but especially if your website is backed up also on your computer, back up the computer as well. And of course, what we said about passwords applies also to your computer. Uh, so make sure that also the computer has a very good password to, to access it. And uh, don't, another thing that I would say, don't keep outdated version of your back, backup uh, in your hosting space because there might be some vulnerabilities in, the co in, in that version of the website that you don't know about and then the account could be hacked through that. So once you have a few copies that are you know, enough to work with, just delete everything uh, older so you don't have the risk of being hacked for something that is not even active on your website anymore. One thing that is not about securing your website, but it's about securing browsing for everyone is HTTPS. So this doesn't secure your website, it secures the communication between the client and the website. It means that any data that is put in your side, your computer cannot be intercepted or it can be intercepted, but it cannot be understood by a bot because it's <laughs> encrypted. And honestly, there is no reason not to use it. I mean, when, it, when SSL came out, people were saying, oh, it slows down your website, and uh, it's a mess, and the certificate, and a lot of excuses. Well, Let's Encrypt, which is one of the inst institution, I don't know how you call them in English, that issues these uh, certificates, they're free. They renew it automatically every three months, and most Web hosted today use HTTP2, which makes uh, browsing much uh, faster anyway. So honestly, there is no reason not to use it. And I would say that also most hosting companies nowadays um, offer this for free. I mean, they should, it's free, so why pay for that? And also a one-click install. So honestly, there is no reason not to use this. Just go through the dashboard of your hosting company and click on the sign that says add SSL certificate and that's it. You got a secure website. Well, you got a secure communication to your website. One thing that came to me a few months ago after I gave this talk is that there are a lot of memes. How do you say in English? Memes or meme? Okay, in Italian we say meme, which is a lot cuter, I think. <laughs> I think it's much better. And uh, so there are these uh, memes around the web that say, what's the name of your pet? What's the name of your mom? Where were you born? What's your hobby? Has it occurred to you that these people are building a massive database of recovery questions? Because that's what's happening there. When you put something to recover your question, what are your, your recover your passwords? What are the most common questions? Where, what's your mom's name? Where were you born? What's the name of your high school? <laughs> Stuff like that. So basically, answering to this kind of meme is like, come on in, <laughs> steal my password. <laughs> so please don't do it. They're really cute, I get it, especially if you call them meme, but no, don't do it. <laughs> 
And now for the very advanced amongst us, I hate this, but I do it, two-factor authentication. I hate it because it's boring. Every time I have to sign into something, I have to take my, my phone out and look for the authenticator, but do it, especially for high-level um, access. So two-factor authentication, you add uh, a second password, basically, that it's uh, randomly generated and it's time-based. Um, and you do it through your phone. So you go, does anyone here use this two-factor authentication for something? Okay, so I don't have to explain too much what uh, 2FA is. It's boring, but it's very, <laughs> it's very useful. Uh, so I would say especially high-level uh, services do use two-factor authentication. For example, for your hosting uh, account, use two-factor authentication. For your Gmail account, use two-factor authentication because those are services that will give access to other services. So be sure to secure this. And if you use WordPress, which I think you do since you're at a WordCamp, there is in the general setting area, they keep changing the name of this, but it's a membership, anyone can register. So that's another very common uh, sign that will tell you for sure that you've been hacked, that you have additional users in your WordPress website that you don't know who they are. Admin 00, admin 01, and you get hundreds of those. Is because they were able to register through your website and gain access as admin. So unflag that because no one really needs to register to your website except for you and the people you, you pick. One thing I really would like you to walk away from this uh, talk with um, awareness. And the, the key concept here is that, honestly, security is a shared responsibility. You cannot always count on someone else. You have to do your part. So core developers keep core WordPress core updated. Uh, plugin developers keep plugin updated. Hosting keeps server updated. But you have to do your part, which starts from this very simple rules that I gave you and that I hope you will follow. So thank you for having me. <laughs> And I hope it will be useful. <laughs> uh, thank you, Francesca. So we'll open up the floor for a few questions. Um, we've got a little bit of time because I think next door also started a little bit after us. Um, does someone have a mic? Or we've got one. We've got one? Yep. Any questions? <laughs> Even though TFA is very boring, do you have a recommended plugin or something that you guys are using a site around for TFA? I personally use, I'm going to tell you exactly what. <laughs> I, I need to, Authenticator. I use Authenticator, Google Authenticator, uh, which is, you know. What plugin do you use to link Authenticator to the WordPress? That's, that's a question that I don't know how to answer. <laughs> But, oh, sorry, no, this doesn't work. Um, on, off, works, no. Um, yes. Um, I am pretty sure that um, there's a plugin for that. <laughs> like everything in WordPress. Basically, uh, the craziest thing you can think of, there's a plugin for that. So I use Authenticator. Um, and I would say to add the 2FA uh, authentication to your website, probably there's a plugin. Uh, if it's not developed by Google itself, which is kind of starting to develop a lot of products for WordPress, there's one for sure. Thank you for a asking something that I can answer. <laughs> yes, other questions? Hi, where? I don't see anything, even with the glasses. <laughs> no? Here? Maybe? Oh, if you want to know also about knitting, I'm game. <laughs> well, well, if there's nobody has a question, uh, I have a question is that uh, in SiteGround, how often do you all take the backups of the website? On SiteGround? Yeah. Uh, so what do you recommend? And uh, let's say in terms of, uh, because if you're going to keep backups of your website, how, how much storage buffer do you need? Okay, so we do automatic uh, backups every day. 
And then depending on the plan that you have, you can do also uh, request additional backups. Uh, we keep them for 30 days on our servers. And if you decide to do something additional, I would say, so this is already taking care of the daily backups, right? But I would say if you're going to make a big change on your website, first of all, never do it live. Always use either staging or local environment. But even if you do it live, like I did for a long time, uh, <laughs> do a backup before that. So, and then once you're done with all the changes, you can just throw it away. I mean, I'm also a bit of a, a keeping things very neat. I'm one of these people that only has a three icons on the desktop. And <laughs> so as soon as something doesn't serve me anymore, it's gone. It's either in the trash or archived somewhere. So that goes also for plugins. If you have plugins or themes, once I got a client that had something like 20 unused themes in her website, that has to stop. <laughs> you need your theme that you're using now. And if you want, for example, one thing that I used to do as a, as a freelancer, I had the theme that I was in use at the moment and then a backup theme like 20, 2012, 2011, one of the basic uh, WordPress themes. So if something went wrong when one of the backup, I still had uh, a base. I don't know, a few months ago, I don't know if you saw the tech uh, crunch had a problem like that. So uh, WordPress VIP servers had a problem. So for a few hours, uh, tech crunch reverted to 2019, which is kind of funny, but at least it was there as a backup uh, theme. So I would say use that. Don't don't you get themes and plugins that you don't use because those are all points of uh, attack so the same with the backup once you're done with it I mean keep it for a few days so you're sure that everything goes do one before the major changes do one after the changes but don't keep too many copies I mean why that's my thinking but in terms of the storage process well, if you are going to keep uh, set maybe a week of uh, backups or 30 days of backup. Okay. Uh, when it comes to choosing a hosting plan, well, like that really, how, much, how much storage? Do that I really depends on your website. There are some websites that are very light and some websites that are major that, that have also very big DB. So it really depends. I, I think at SiteGround, the minimum space that we give is something like uh, 10 gigs on the basic plan, and that should serve you for quite a few days of backup. Uh, and it goes up and you can always buy extra storage but so for one week of backup that should be enough unless you have a major photography website that weighs tons of gigs so it always depends on the size of your website basically it goes down to the size of your website yes is it uh, have I replied is it a good answer okay I have someone here in front <laughs> hi Hi, uh, I don't have a question for you, but feedback. I am a security professional. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, on all of my sites, uh, I use WordFence. Okay. Um, it's a very good, comprehensive, even the free one, uh, handles mm -hmm. most everything I need. And it does have a free uh, 2FA with it. Okay. It uses the free uh, OTP on your phone. All right. And so um, there's no need to pay a lot. WordFence. Word fence. Uh, Word very highly recommended, um, and so uh, you know one of your criteria was that a lot yeah. of people recommended this one is. Okay. So I've had a lot of good luck with that. I use it on all my sites. All right. Then Word Fence, Word as in WordPress, and Fence as a oh, a fence. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes. More questions. One and two. I see one there and one there. <laughs> right. Thanks for sharing. Um, Thank you for coming. Regarding, uh, let's say you're working with a third party developer that requests any access to, for example, cPanel or your WordPress admin, so how do we ensure that um, this partnership or this, uh, when you're engaging with other parties, how do we ensure that this is secure? Ah. <laughs> So you want to give cPanel or admin area access to a third person because they need to work on your website. 
Uh, there, uh, okay, so there's a question how we solve that at SiteGround. There's an answer how we solve that at SiteGround and uh, an answer on how you solve those in other places. So in other places, I would say never share your password with anyone, even your mother or son or partner. Your password is sacred and it's yours. So if you can add a user, add a user. And I don't know if you can control the level of access they have to your website. I think, again, there are a lot of tools for that uh, that are not hosting dependent. And why would you want them to access your hosting plan and not just your website? You probably want them to, to access your website ah, because they need to update stuff. I don't know. Well, okay. maybe uh, Francesca can probably help you. I think there's uh, there are a few plugins out there that can uh, restrict the memory. Yes. So you could probably create a but, special user with, with without those access. But that's at WordPress. So that's at WordPress access. In terms uh, of hosting, well, I know that recently we launched a product that solves that, but that's for a side ground. I wouldn't know for other hosting how to how to do this, but. So the general rule would be don't share your access with anyone, <laughs> honestly. If you can, uh, add, a, add a user. And then you can see through the logs if they did something that is not uh, right. Yeah, uh, one, one thing also you can, you can keep a log, then you know what they changed on the website. Yeah. So that you can reverse the, the, the change. Again, I would say if you work with other people, I would go the um, distributed um, development environment route with version control, with Git, so you know who's, you can approve what's being deployed before it's being deployed, so you can prevent anything from happening. But this requires obviously having a development workflow that uh, works with that, and that you can do with most hosting that will give you SSH. Uh, key so you can uh, you can deploy uh, through Git. We have space for one more question. Yes, you had a question. Uh, I'm curious in terms of the what's the value at uh, when you compare security when it's on the managed side versus you might try to do it self hosted, you know. I cannot answer to that because I don't know the other platforms, I'm sorry. But I'm sure uh, Ivan, my colleague, knows more about this because he also works on the enterprise uh, team, so he probably have more, uh, uh, more um, of, a, of a knowledge about this. I have, personally, I... Even before I started working for SiteGround, I always used managed hosting because I cannot be bothered with that. That's not my job. So unless you're a sysadmin, I, why would you take that? <laughs> like if you're a freelance developer, you already have to wear so many hats because you have to develop and market yourself and deliver and do the accounting. Why do you want also to manage your servers? <laughs> I mean, as, so, as long as someone else does it for you. But uh, technically, I think uh, Ivan is the best person to reply to this. And there are other, other hosting companies sponsoring work in Singapore, so you can get more uh, feedback from everyone. I think we're out of time. We can squeeze in one quick one. If there's a quick one, possibly about knitting or Italian food, why no one has asked me about What's my? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so everyone, please thank you, Francesca. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, Francesca will be at the Cyber Desk for